Hello, it's Reya and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my October reading wrap-up, finally. It's been a hectic month, uh, but finally I'm here to do my October reading wrap-up and I got a lot done in October, so I'm very excited to share all the books with you. So without further ado, let's get started. So first up, I'm going to be sharing with you all the manga and comics that I read, uh, starting with Berserk. I read five volumes of Berserk, volumes 17 through 21. And yeah, um, this was a very dark chapter in Berserk. It is basically the uh, rebirth arc, conviction arc. It has to do with a lot of religious extremism, um, some references to Inquisition, and also people questioning their faith and uh, how zealously they, like, how much their faith actually can do for them. It also touches on things like refugees and uh, class differences in, in a way that I really didn't remember. Like, I remember reading these volumes back when I was a teenager way before I probably should have read uh, any anything relating to Berserk, but um, back then I didn't really have the tools or knowledge to really appreciate the work that Mura was doing with regards to portraying um, like poverty and uh, the turmoil of like refu refugee camps etc. It was done pretty well, actually. And I'm also surprised how sex-positive Mura was for his time. Like, these were done in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, when these were published in Japan, these volumes. And there's actual, like, um, like a group of sex workers who are, like, banding together, taking care of each other, and, uh, like, like, there's some actual, like, really interesting commentary about sex work that's pretty, like, positive. And I was like, whoa, I, I, I didn't remember that Mura did that. So I was uh, really uh, happily surprised with a bunch of these volumes. Like, there are, there are some uh, problems, like, for example, sex workers being like, I'll give you a freebie and stuff. And I'm like, no, no, that's like, no. Uh, so there, there are... A bunch of things that are a little bit uh, male gazy, but at the same time, like, like even touching on those topics is such a huge like uh, thing that I didn't even remember that he was doing. So I gave e like these volumes uh, three and a half to four stars each. Um, yeah, and uh, I was really sucked in by this arc. Like, this, this is one, this is a great arc for Berserk, so yeah. Um, I am very uh, thrilled to be continuing on with the series. And then I read The Magic Fish by Throng Le Nien, and this was such a beautiful graphic novel. It is basically all about communication and finding ways to communicate with your family members when you don't exactly have the same language to express things that are uh, important and deeply personal for you. It is about um, uh, Vietnamese immigrants and a second generation Vietnamese um, immigrant boy who wants to come out to his parents but doesn't quite have uh, the words to do that uh, because he doesn't know the words in Vietnamese. And uh, it's it's like told through these fairy tales and uh, there's these different ways in which the fairy tales are told, like the inner inner ways in which these different characters who are telling the fairy tales are imagining it. For example, with the boy, his inner world is very much a fusion between Asian and Western cultures and his mother is more like that sort of 60, like, um, like, mode era and uh, more, like, chic, modern, Vietnam-inspired. And then um, when 
uh, her, the mother's aunt is telling a story that's more like in the uh, 50s, in, in, in the uh, pre-war type uh, Vietnam. Uh, so just looking at the inner worlds of how the stories are like presented is really amazing and I loved the art style. It is so rich and intricate and I, I just really loved it and the muted uh, flat color color palette is uh, like really enhances the like really sumptuous and rich ink work of the of the art so yeah I really love this I gave it uh, four and a half stars like one of my new favorite graphic novels for sure and I will be getting my own copy of it and then moving on to the books that I read, I listened to a lot of audiobooks this month because I was having a little bit of a rough go of it with my reading, like I wasn't really feeling like picking up books, so audiobooks really helped me out um, a lot this month. So first up I read The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling and I have to say that the audiobook was really well done, I really felt the claustrophobic like like tense um, urgency of of the story through the audio. It, it was actually like I was listening to it on my commutes to work and uh, people probably were watching me on the bus being like like this because I, I, I was getting so tense. And uh, it is basically uh, examining this idea of how how much power people who have wealth and resources can have over desperate uh, people who have no, like, have no money and uh, like this, this is basically about a woman accepting a really dangerous caving job um, for the prospect of getting like insane, an, an insane uh, reward for it and uh, this sort of descent into desperation and madness. Uh, I have to say that at points it was a bit repetitive, like um, the character is constantly walking to, through the same same tunnels in the cave uh, and going over the same beats and I get that that's a, a point in the story that you are sort of being in this character's head and seeing her start to lose it and, and trying to get her grip on reality. But as a reader it becomes kind of tedious to listen or to read about it when it's like non-stop repetition of things that have been said previously. I also think that the sort of romance that happens in this book is uh, sort of unbelievable in a sense that like I I, I get the point uh, when they're in the cave and there's only like these two people, they're the only one they have. So in that desperate moment you kind of start to maybe feel affection to someone. But after the event, that's what kind of like, like made me think that okay this is kind of silly. Um, so there were things that I really loved about this book and the things that I loved, I really loved. And the things that I didn't like as much were like, eh, I, I don't like this as much, but it wasn't like a deal breaker. So I ended up giving this book three stars. I do think that if you like that sort of very intimate, close uh, look at horror, uh, I think this book might be for you. If you if you are someone who wants more than two characters closely interacting with each other then I think this might be a pass for you. But uh, I, I sort of liked it. It was, um, it was a fine read, not a personal favorite, but I'm glad I read it. So three stars. Then I read The Inheritance of Orchidea Divina by Zoraida Cordova and I gave this book three and a half stars. It was really lusciously written. I liked the family dynamics a lot and I liked the two timelines where we see the family trying to piece together Orchidia's past but also we see in another timeline Orchidia actually like uh, going on her journey. And I also really liked the very like ending bit, the very like last words the book ended on. 
and I really think that this was such an excellent look at like magical realism. However, I do think that some of the characters kind of felt like to use a Star Trek term red shirts. Like there there were a bunch of different characters in the um like family unit of Orchidia Divina who weren't utilized. You basically um get closely um like inter introduced to four characters and all of the other relatives are basically relegated to background flavor and uh, you don't feel as close to them so when things happen to those characters like I didn't care as much so I, I actually wished that um, Zoraida Cordova would have taken a little bit more risks with the main characters um, because we as readers know them better so we are more affected when something happens to them. But I really liked the reading experience, I liked the writing, and um, it was just a very fun ride, and uh, I really liked the audio narration as well. Though sometimes when the audio narrator would switch from one character to the other, um, they didn't really, um, like, utilize like tone pitch or like um, different voices enough so I was sometimes confused about what character they were doing at any given moment. Uh, so I ended up giving this book a three and a half stars. I enjoyed it, um, I'm very glad I read it and I would recommend it but it is not uh, something that I will probably go back to anytime soon. So yeah. Then I read Pet by Akweke Imezi. I immersion read this, so I had the physical paperback copy and I also listened to this on audio. And I really loved the audio narrator. The way he did Pet's voice was so gripping. Like he used like these different like growls and grunts and like his voice became all velvety and smooth when he did Pet's voice and I really like I, I really felt Pet's character in that moment. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed the audio. I also really enjoyed the story. I, I think that the only thing that kind of bothered me at times was that I wasn't very sure about the character's age. Like, were these like high schoolers or middle schoolers? Like, I feel like I... Like, the book was written very young, but also the way the characters interacted felt like they could have been older, so that kind of threw me off. But other than that, I really enjoyed it. I am very excited about the prequel that's coming, uh, that was kind of hinted at uh, in this book, and I really enjoyed the concept of this book, and uh, the way it handles very serious topics about, like, it sort of hints at the severity of the situation, but it doesn't actually graphically show you things. I, I thought that that was a very um, nice decision on the author's part, uh, because this is a book that's geared towards a younger audience. So I, I'm just really happy that I read this book, um, because like I have a lot of friends who have recently um, read this and really liked it, and I'm happy to be one of them. Uh, I gave this four stars, I really liked it, and uh, yeah, can't wait to read more from Aquake Mezzi. And then I read some non-fiction, because I like to torture myself. Uh, first one I read was Medical Bondage, Race, Gender and the Origin of American Gynecology by Deirdre Cooper Owens, and it basically looks at all of the human experiments done on enslaved people and also indentured uh, Irish immigrants um, in the uh, 19th century during uh, the time when like there was a lot of leaps and bounds made in uh, gynecolo gynecology and um, medical um, like practices and it was very hard to listen to this book, um, because it is such a 
serious topic and there was so many awful things happening. So if you are someone who has trouble uh, with like very graphic descriptions of medical procedures and surgery, I would not recommend this book because this goes into like detail about how these things were done. And also this book will make you mad. Uh, I feel like I spent most of the time I was listening to this book uh, curled up in an induced rage because I was so appalled um, at what these uh, women had to suffer through. Uh, usual, like, like, let's be real. They they suffer through this through these experiments without consent. And uh, yeah. Uh, I can't really say much more about it because this book is literally what it says on the title. It is, uh, it goes over the basically the 100 year period of um, the 19th century uh, medical establishment and how gynecology became a respected field of uh, medical study, essentially. Um, I gave this book three and a half stars. It was um, it it was very educational. I learned a lot, uh, and uh, but also uh, a lot of the time, it it could repeat itself a bit because like the same quotes and the like by the same doctors were being used over and over. So at times it became a little bit repetitive. I swear, uh, uh, some of those quotes I probably could retain and uh, recite from heart by now because they were they were said so many times um, and um, also I learned that Kellogg's who of the of the serial fame was uh, uh, had a hard on for eugenics so so that was interesting so yeah um, if you if you are interested in medical history I would recommend this book if you are averse to listening or reading about graphic depictions of surgery, I would give it a pass. I personally enjoy is the wrong word. I learned a lot and I'm happy to have this knowledge now. Next I probably want to torture myself by reading Medical Apartheid. So that's that's gonna be another doozy. But yeah, uh, three and a half stars for this. And then the last book uh, that I finished in the month of uh, no, month of October was Cultish, The Language of Fanaticism by Amanda Montel. And this was really interesting because it goes over various different organizations, cults and um, groups and uh, like even uh, multi-level marketing and stuff and goes over the ways in which these groups and organizations indoctrinate their members to um, think differently and how language plays a huge role in indoctrinating and radicalizing members in these groups. Uh, so I thought that, that that was really interesting. I will say that I went into this book uh, with sort of the wrong expectations. I was expecting it to focus more on like linguistics and actually examining the language itself, but it's more uh, based on the social aspects of language than actually the uh, linguistic side. So that's something to keep in mind uh, if you do decide to pick it up. I will also say that um, the author inserts a lot of humor in um, their analysis uh, on these things, and I am not uh, a huge fan of that approach myself, so um, I probably would have axed a couple of the jokes in each segment just to, you know, um, because these are serious topics, you know, uh, cults are a serious topic, so I, I just feel that it isn't appropriate to really joke around, um, especially considering that a lot of these cults have like surviving members and stuff. I, I just don't feel that it is appropriate. So um, I really uh, enjoyed the deep dive into like examining like cults like Jonestown and Heaven's Gate uh, and also like going over how, how these groups 
can have like similar ways of indoctrinating and approaching their members as multi-level marketing campaigns or even like um, like sports uh, things like CrossFit and SoulCycle and stuff. So that was really interesting um, to like so see the examination of different tactics and stuff. But yeah, the humor and um, the humor and the lack of like linguistic approach was what kind of knocked it down for me a bit, but that was also partly due to my own, um, like, expectations uh, that were false from the beginning. So yeah, I gave it three and a half stars. I really enjoyed it. I would recommend it. Uh, will I read it again? Probably not. I will probably look for some other type of uh, non-fiction on the topic, but I think that this would be a very good, like, beginner's book if you want to know more about cults and uh, like this particular topic. So three and a half stars for Cultish. And there you have it. Those were all of the books that I read in the month of November. Tell me in the comments if you have read any of these books or if you plan on reading them. I would very much like to know if we are on the same page or not. And if you got this far, leave me donut emoji. You know, have some sweet sweet cravings every now and then. A donut emoji would be a fine thing to have. And I will see you in another video very soon. Bye bye!